Yeah, Alex Kidman here, and once again, I'm doing something a little bit unusual in the worst possible lighting conditions possible, which is why I probably look quite grainy to you at the moment. I'm testing out a bunch of phone cameras, and look, you clicked on the thumbnail, you know what's coming. I'm testing out the iPhone 14 family for their low light performance, because this is one of those areas where phone cameras, especially premium phone cameras, should excel. So what I'm going to do, I'm just at a local park, it is very late at night, and I'm going to go and test out the 14 Pro Max, the 14 Pro, the 14, against a couple of other contenders in the low light space. I haven't got every camera, every phone that I'd like to have for this test, but I've got one I could grab fairly easily. So putting up against them, I've got last year's 13 Pro, and one of my favorite low light cameras in the Android space, the Google Pixel 6 Pro. Would have loved to have a Galaxy S22, but it was not to be. So let's get out there and get to shooting. But before we start, a couple of ground rules. I shot everything handheld as close as possible between each phone, but all essentially automatic. Yes, in manual mode, you can get some very, very different results. Nothing wrong with that. But let's face it, most people are going to shoot auto. Also, I am not looking for particularly aesthetically pleasing photos. This is about testing the low light capabilities, basically seeing what each phone picks up. Not necessarily that it's great framing, great composition, or a huge, great, wonderful choice of photo. And now, without further ado, let's get on to the pics. First up, a basic shot of the field. This is the iPhone 14, which actually impressed me more than I thought it would. A bit of noise in the shot, but quite a nice, pleasing composition. Jumping back to last year's iPhone 13 Pro, and I get a slightly better composition, a little bit more of a gradient in the sky there, a little bit less noise, slightly nicer, but you'd expect that. Here's how the Pixel 6 Pro managed the shot. Nice detail in the foreground grass, reasonable pickup. Frankly, most of the phones did pretty well with this particular test. And here we see the iPhone 14 Pro. And as you can see, it's put a lot more color into that grass. It's a really interesting choice. Presumably, Apple's all new fancy photonic engine is at work here. But that is a very pleasing shot. Almost a pixel level of coloring in, because usually it's night mode does that kind of thing. Really interesting here that the Pro Max, which you would think would shoot the same as the Pro, because they are the same camera system, actually dropped a fair bit of colour here. Again, all shot at the same time, all shot at the same place, all letting the phones decide what they want to do. It's still a good shot, though. Moving along, a truck in the parking lot. The iPhone 14, definitely a bit more muted on its light than many of the other phones here. Not a bad shot, but certainly not the best. The 13 Pro gives a brighter, more colourful shot than the 14 by far. A better photo. Again, I would expect that. The Pixel gave a really nice version of this shot. It's, it's not oversaturated. It's not undersaturated. It's really just nicely well done. Not that the 14 Pro did badly, just that it chose to pick up more light in this situation and process through for less of the colour. Still a decent shot, but honestly for this one, I would just about give it to the Pixel 6 Pro. What's really interesting here, of course, is that the 14 Pro Max does almost exactly the same shot as the 14 Pro. So this clubhouse shot is basically there to mix up some high-intensity light and low-light situations. The 14 does okay here, loses a fair bit of detail in that clubhouse, though, which is a very common problem. The 13 Pro delivers a kind of moody shot. Again, reminder, I'm letting the phones pick how they're going to focus on these. Uh, it's a decent looking photo, but it obviously does lose a lot of detail in that foreground. The Pixel 6 Pro delivers a rather flat shot. Not great or pleasing in any particular aspect. Not awful, obviously, but uh, I've seen better out of the Pixel 6 Pro in other situations. Whereas the 14 Pro delivered what I think is actually my favourite photo of the bunch. Really nice balance between the stars and the clubhouse and the field. You do lose a little bit of detail on that clubhouse balcony that's in some of the other shots, but otherwise this is my pick of the bunch. The 14 Pro Max, which should shoot basically identically to the 14 Pro in most situations, decided it really loved it. Some lens flare here, which does change the shot quite a bit. Again, reminder, I am letting the cameras pick what they want to do in every situation here. I was really taken by the silhouette of these trees. I know I said I wasn't going to go for arty shots, but this one also seemed to serve a purpose because it's got that very much black that you want to get in a silhouette alongside the skyline behind it. The 14, unfortunately, delivered the worst results of anything in the set. Not awful, obviously, but yeah, there's a lot of lacking detail here. This was a tough shot, and the 13, honestly, didn't do a great deal better. It's still a little better, but there's still more detail that you might want to get out of that shot. 
The Pixel 6 Pro does a really nice job with the skylight. It looks very dramatic, but you pay for it with a lot of noise on those trees. This was a tough test. The 14 Pro did a good job. Nice job on the star field, reasonable detail on the trees, creates a very pleasing composition overall. Uh, again, I think the 14 Pro is the winner in this category, although, again, it is fairly close with the Pro Max if you prefer that larger style of photo. And just to give you an idea of how dark it actually was, here's some video I shot just walking around with the iPhone 14 Pro and some other cameras, which I'll use for my closing thoughts. Although my closing thoughts are probably pretty obvious by now. The 14 Pro especially delivers the goods. I was fairly impressed with the 14. It's still not the phone that I would go for if you want camera results. And Google is shooting up there, and if you like the way it Colors photos, for example, it's still quite a good option within this space, especially given that vast price difference there. But for right now in the premium camera space, I'd say, yeah, Apple seems to have cracked it. Anyway, that's my take on its low light camera performance. Anything you want to know, any thoughts you want to give, pop them below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.